guys. Um, my name is Nick Nigro, and this is a, a little, I guess, insight on uh, my life. September 8th, 1990. You know, this this crazy beam of light struck down and uh, I, I happened to be born. And, uh, you know, I was born into a, a really good family. I was the first grandchild. And growing up, you know, I was spoiled. I'm an only child. I'm 26 years old today. I don't know if you did the math. But, uh, you know, I'm only child, spoiled, rotten, growing up. There was two different aspects, like how I was treated and like how I viewed life. The one was from my dad, because the way my dad lived his life in my early years, like I viewed it as hardworking, work for like you work for what you want to get, and you get it, and you keep doing the same thing. Like you you build yourself up that way, like hard work, you know, loyalty to family, trustworthy, all good qualities in a person. Now on the other side, my mom's side of the family, my grandfather gave me this like whole perception that. You know, I could do no wrong. You know, I learned how to manipulate at a very young age. And that obviously was not good for me in the long run. Because obviously, uh, you know, the way things turned out in my life, it wasn't too good. But today, you know, I'm learning from those experiences. Like, I don't know, for some reason, it seems like September 11th, 2001. And it just happened to be that way. Like, it was around that same time that, you know... My father w went into a rehab for uh, using, you know, cocaine and abusing alcohol, methamphetamine, all these crazy drugs. And like, I was young at the time, but I didn't really know what was going on. And you know, going to see my father in a like, I, I viewed it as a mental institution or something. Like, it kind of had me sick in my stomach. Like, I thought everything was over. Like, things were so different than they were when I was growing up. But. Other things happened on the other side of the family. Like, I feel like everything just started spiraling downhill. Like, my grandfather's business partner got shot and killed. Like, all this fucking crazy shit happened in life. And it all happened around the same same time frame. And that led into some other shit. Everything kind of started progressing slowly for the worse. And I wasn't getting what I wanted. So, you know, I was good at sports. I played sports, and that happened to be my outlet at the time. Like, I was able to go have fun, play sports, be productive in these sports, be productive in school, you know, regardless if my dad was getting high at home and stuff, like, I still used all these, like, activities as positive outlets, and that was good for a little while. But, I know, I went on, I got good grades, never failed anything, I went to Catholic school my whole life, you know, like... I'm such a good kid, you know, that's what my family thought at least, and uh, I wasn't, I didn't know how to live my life, like, only thing I knew was fun, that, that is like the basis of my story is my perception of fun, like, I'll keep saying that, I don't care if you guys get tired of it, because that's the reality, like, life is what I make it, and I made it into a fucking living hell, you know, I, I went to live with a friend who was my best friend, and uh, that's when all that perception of fun and all that partying, you know, really, really, really stepped in, like, stepped up, you know, cocaine came into play, started doing some coke, you know, drinking every night, smoking weed, selling weed, but then things started changing a little bit, I got these, uh, met some new people who were doing new drugs to me, you know, pills, like, oxycodone, Xanax, uh, pretty much anything you can name, they were doing and I was down. Cause like now I fit in with these people. So once I fit in, I stayed. And then I became the person who had it all again. Cause like the personality that I have, like when I find something that I like and other people like, I like to make them happy while it makes me happy. And by making them happy, it makes me happy. But the only reason they're happy is because I have a fucking drug that they want. If I didn't have that, they wouldn't even be friends with me. Even though I'm a good person, it just, the main concept that if I didn't have this shit, they wouldn't have associated with me. 
but I didn't see it like that. Like it, it took me till now to realize that I have like four or five true friends in my life that none of that shit ever mattered to. But we kept uh, we kept doing shit, you know, from age 19 to 20, you know, smoking weed, drinking, doing coke, doing Molly, doing Xanax, doing ecstasy, and and fucking oxys, turned into none of that. And just shooting heroin. It went like from one crazy extreme to the next extreme. And I fell in love with it. Like it took me three days from sniffing heroin to going to shooting it alone in my in my bedroom. Like I taught myself how to do it. That's how uh, fucked up I am. You know, I, I did it alone knowing the fact that I could die like right away. But that wasn't even the thing. I wanted to get high, and the shit I was doing, sniffing it, wasn't working anymore. So I decided to load up a syringe and shoot up dope. And that's exactly what I did. And <laughs> from there, life spiraled. So I think it was June, June 13th, 2015. Um, you know, a lot of things led up to like this happening, obviously, but, you know, I come home from a long day and I just picked up a bunch of drugs. You know, I wanted to get high really bad and I was dope sick, you know, so I was freaking out. I didn't get, didn't get high for like 12, 13 hours. And I come home, go into my room right here and I'm sitting, you know, even the walls are still there. Like, this, is, this is almost over two years ago and the walls are still like gross from me living in here. Like I destroyed this fucking house. Like completely. So I'm over here waiting. All of a sudden, I hear a knock, knock, knock on the door. I was like, oh no, what the hell is this? Like at this time, I had a warrant after my arrest because I'd been on the run from probation. And I was, I already knew what the time was. So, you know, I, I went to the window. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, definitely cops are here. So I looked at my girlfriend. I was like, hey, babe, it's over. This, this is it. This is where it ends. And I'm looking down. There's, there's freaking three cops at the door. Apparently, there was a suspicious vehicle call on my work van. The work van is just a white work van with some windows and no like company tags, no nothing. So like it was super sketchy, I guess, like going to get these drugs. And at this point, I'm only wearing shorts, socks, and nothing else. That's all I got on. And I'm walking around the house, all strung out, my hair's down to here, look completely ridiculous. So as I'm doing this, I'm walking down the stairs, the cop follows me back upstairs. I'm like, I'm not gonna go back to my room because that's where the drugs are, so I come in here. In my grandfather's room, like I walk around, he's like, What are you doing? I was like, Dude, I don't know, I need some water. I was like, I need some water right now. So I walk downstairs, and now, like, right where you guys are with the camera, right where the camera's at, like right around there, I hit the bottom platform. There's cop, my grandmother, cop outside, and my grandfather talking. The other cops right about where you guys are. As soon as I hit this thing, I turn on the freaking jets. I'm not running, but I'm like power walking towards this way, and like. As soon as I get around here, I realize that the cop, still at the bottom of the stairs, hit this way, and now I'm off. Like, in my head the whole time. This is my whole plan. Like, I'm not going to jail, detoxing in jail. Like, it's, I'm, not, I'm not going through all that shit. So, like, I know this, and not everyone does, so as soon as I hit this door, in, like, one motion, I swung it, locked it. As I locked it, I shut it. The cop behind me took him, like, I don't even know how long, because I was gone. I hopped this thing, like literally came out, hopped over this, and took off down that way. From where I came from to where I am today, it's such a different person, and so many people see a difference. And like, they just, I don't know, when I, when I go see people, they're just like, I don't know, they feel the positive energy that I'm putting out. And like, that's what I like. I like putting that positive energy because it's just gonna keep coming back. And if someone is negative when I, when I associate with them, if they're a negative person and I'm still positive, I'm not letting their negativity affect me. I'm just gonna be myself. Either they're gonna come out of their negative shit or they're not and I'm just gonna stray away from them. Like, it's that simple. I don't have to put myself in those types of situations. I choose not to, and I choose to be happy.
at the end of the day. And I actually enjoyed it. And just know that it's always a possibility. If I go back out and choose to do that, it's over. Like I talked about it earlier, it's over. Death is a high, high, high possibility in this life. And I completely accept that. And I choose today not to die.